Okay, I think uh, yeah, it's time. Let us start. So today is an important, uh, I think, time, important uh, step, important milestone in your entire course program. And this is what we told you, and Raj explained to you in detail the gate one presentations. You are going to make a full journey from your idea to venture creation. So this is the first time that you will share with both your teammates and your classmates and the judges about what you are doing. As I said, we do not have any written exam for this course. So your entire grade will depend on gate 1, gate 2 and the final presentations. So this is going to be an important element into your overall assessment. As you mentioned, at this gate 1, we are expecting the team to come up with what they have done, the work they have put in and what is going to be the result of that. Very importantly, each team has been, have got their roles for themselves, each member, the CEO, the CTO, CMO and CFO. The gate one is for the first two members of the team, the CEO and the CMO. The second uh, gate, gate two would have C2 and CFO and the final we have all of you together. So today we are going to essentially see on your idea what you are working on and that idea to be explained by these two members, the CEO and the CMO and you have to essentially highlight what you have done and what you are going to share in the process of creating this venture. Raj, you want to add anything? So we talked about what the CEO role is and what yeah. the That's right. So it should come out uh, what we have been told. Okay. I am the CEO of Shavani Chandruki. He is the he is Vivek Sena, the CTO and the CFO of EACWA. Two other team members are not here because they had uh, they are at home, not in the institute because of some so the main problem we are facing now in the society in the past decade if we see like we have faced many droughts in the past decade like in 2015 2013 was the worst drought that we have faced in the last 40 years where water was not there and many water issues were concerned and from other places to compensate the same water was dig from other places and uh, things were done like that and also in the Vankade stadium also when uh, there is severe drought in the other place of Maharashtra six, around approximately per day 66,000 kiloliters of water per day is used to uh, just water the stadium in uh, Pune, Mumbai and also Navi Mumbai. So the main problem that we are facing uh, that we took into consideration is water. So, and also even in IITB, sometimes due to the drop problem, there are water issues that we get in GPO meals also that water is not there, we will get shortage of water. So, next. So, what we are looking at? So, we are looking at the efficient use of water so that the water is saved at an individual level, not on a broader scale. So, if we come down to a narrow level, so if we can save water at an individual level, on a broader scale we can save large amounts of water without even uh, without even considering the major issues. Yeah. So, the existing products. So the existing products that we are looking at are we are trying to manufacture shower which uses less amount of water. So the existing products that uh, according to our market research that we found are Aquamax which is a, a product of Eco 365 it operates at 8 liters per minute like a typical shower head now uses around 10 to 12 liters but the uh, but optimizing showers in the present market we have found 8 liters per minute that is Eco 365 it operates at a pressure of 5 bar and it works in the principle of streamlined flow of water. And the other one is Hans Grohe, it operates at 6 liters per minute with 4 per bar, it, uh, it, uh, te the technology used is Venturi effect, air, air, is, uh, air is put into the water so that it gets uh, things. And the other product is Aquant, it is a very high end product, it prices around 30k to 40k. So our product, so what we are targeting is at 2.5 to 3 liters per minute which is very much significantly less it is around six, uh, the, it reduces the consumption of water around 60 percent 
so and the new showering experience we also want to reduce the feeling of more water and more experience like if only if we have more water on our body then we will feel very much comfortable and all and the indirect savings of electricity like when we use more water we take more electricity for water heating like that is also a major issue in the commercial sector where in the hotels major part of the electric electricity is used to for heating um, uh, in the individual rooms so even the it is indirectly saved without matlab even we are looking into it yeah so what our product feels like and looks like yeah yeah this product we actually try try to build a product from the from the ground up okay we 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 got a back end from a market and we find out a different egg existing models and we tried from the what industry standard boilers to the existing uh, existing existing models so we try to build up uh, a prototype a a a working model of a shower okay the this will be a shower okay the actually you this seven chairs models which can actually simulate an experience of automizing of water and and like we try to run few few uh, tests on it and we got a got up to the uh, flow rate of 4.5 to 5 liter per uh, hour minute which is like significantly uh, less compared to the like, existing such such our rates and we also made a, uh, a video yeah we yeah, like to show it once this is exactly the how it works so you can actually you know this is a working model and that's it and that's what the part will be and control base you so the market survey we went to different hotels to know the commercial rates and all the commercial use of water in the uh, hotel sector like the showers are majorly used uh, in the uh, hotels like uh, every okay So one minute. Yeah, the more we went to Calif Hotel and uh, it uses a centralized heating system. They are ready actually to uh, uh, take the prototype and get the testing over there. They also told that we'll get a certificate if we get the tested over there. And also Ananta Hotel, they are, they use a solar water heaters. So that is an issue that we must concentrate upon. Like if if you they use solar heater, then the heating electricity cost wouldn't be considered. So we have to make a point okay, of that. Yeah, okay, and this is the BMC. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. So basically, our is the telemedicine platform for dermatology. It connects dermatology patient to dermatology. Dermatology encompasses of dermatology, venerology, trichology, and all such stuff related to skin care and venereal diseases. Our vision is to utilize network of dermatology to build most efficient healthcare delivery system. From where the diagnosis to treatment will be delivered to your doorstep in 90 minutes. Next. Poor patient to doctor ratio in case of dermatology it's far worse and practitioner time is not being effectively used and lack of shared decision making technology. This is current telemedicine platform which none of them is a holistic platform. Some are e-pharmacy and some are only for e-diagnosis. Okay. And so here is our solution where you can ask for query and audio video consult the doctor. And we want we are developing image processing and machine learning algorithm to effectively diagnose skin and hair related condition. to a doctor decision these are our mockups for the app on the consumer side mm -hmm. next and customer user validation i have talked to some customers so they are saying that if i get it done in 10 minutes rather than upon giving missing my full days work so it will be better for me on the practitioner side currently they are using whatsapp to get aided by their senior doctor that what is the treatment and diagnosis of the xyz problem which they are facing for the first time and for improving their practice they can they are ready to buy anything they are currently buying matlab 10000 10000 or per year practice management software so coming to the bmc and the target customers and stakeholders of the value proposition so we are basically targeting on the dermatology patients the patients related to skin problems beauty enthusiasts enthusiasts hair related problems and nail and lip care so the value created is faster affordable and reliable 
and uh, the major thing is that there is no need for any physical transport to have the treatment. So coming to the practitioners, we give them the uh, practice enhancement, patient engagement, practice management and the shared decision maker. Shared decision maker in the sense we uh, connect all the people, all the uh, dermatologists, the practitioners within our platform and we share the uh, medicine, the medical case with every one of them and, uh, and get the uh, right diagnosis for that. So the value created is a supportive decision, wider and efficient patient engagement. So the key partners uh, related to our segment is the State and Regional Dermatology Association, Pharmacies with Digital Inventory and the Dermatology Labs and the Beauty Parlors. And the key activities, activities are the, so what we provide as the telemedicines, e-prescriptions, e practice management, practice engagement and data analytics and the machine learning things. So the key resources we use, what we want is the initial network of the practitioners and the prognosis database of patients, strong technical knowledge in the team and the capital resources. So the cost factors are like uh, the normal cost factors like office. Let's not go into this. We are right now we are taking only our customer thing. So let's not go into cost. Yeah. Okay, fine. So the market and uh, customer willingness to pay for this. So we have like just estimated, and uh, we have we have got it from a data based from international general law. So international general of pharmacy pharmaceuticals, and it it shows that uh, the uh, current market value is around twenty three billion dollars. So in that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, fine. Uh, so, in that, uh, we can serve up to seven billion dollar of the in industry, and uh, our target market is up to up around one point seven billion dollars. And uh, the average customer will will pay from three hundred to five thousand rupees based on the complexity. So, going to the marketing strategies uh, like a contextual digital marketing, visual presence of pharmacies, as well as a few beautification uh, grooming centers, and. Uh, we are going to attract the customers through the free free query answering and suggest generic affordable substitute for highly priced medical products. Yeah. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Anand Goyal, the CEO of Techni and this is Sohan, my friend, who is the CMO. Next. Yeah, next. So basically, uh, in spite of internet, smartphones and other uh, resources, there is still a big digital divide in India and a lot of people still don't know how to use Paytm, uh, as simple as Paytm, WhatsApp, Facebook and other uh, important resources which can ease our life. Uh, for instance, uh, my father still doesn't know how to use Paytm, he is a businessman and he has no clue how Paytm works and we feel that this is one big problem. So there are two sectors. So we initially uh, were planning, we, we in fact are planning to build a personal assistant which can learn and uh, so you can just, the, the idea is that everyone knows how to call, like even an illiterate person as, uh, as low as a plumber or an electrician or anyone. I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, dividing on the basis of work, I'm just saying that there are, uh, uh, almost everyone knows how to use a phone call. And if information can be made available at one phone call distance, that would be pretty good because this way we can, uh, I mean, this way we sort of remove the dependency on internet and smartphones. So the second, uh, so the initial, the, the first thing that we think of is that uh, we need to build a simple phone call service. A person can call up on a phone and ask for various services. What is the best hotel near me? I stay in IIT Pavilion. Tell me how to learn, how to teach me how to use Paytm, teach me how to use WhatsApp, what is the best bank around me, uh, where are the ATMs around me, anything. Uh, okay, I'm a driver, I'm driving a car and I'm stuck uh, at so and so place, can you take me the way uh, out to Mumbai uh, or say Pavai area, anything. The second, uh, the second thing that we are also have uh, at the back of our mind is an automated concierge service for banks, hotels, etc. We haven't gone into the depth of it, we are still focusing on the first part, given that we already will have something automation working on the first part. Next. So the existing solution is haptic, it's well known to be a personal assistant, but as I said, uh, people don't know how to use WhatsApp, Paytm still, and uh, haptic is too far a thing. A chatbot is something too ambitious for a person who doesn't know how to use simple things like Paytm. Next. So for customer discovery, we thought that there are a few potential customers, villagers who don't have access to internet and even smartphones. 
less educated people, for instance, I would uh, say uh, a lot of people of our previous generation, for instance, uh, I would name my father himself. So he is not too educated, but he is a businessman, owns a smartphone, has internet, but doesn't know anything more than WhatsApp. So, yeah, the third segment we were targeting on the farmers who are interested in knowing the price of various commodities across various cities. Next. So, during customer validation, we have a doc for this in which we spoke to customers and have results on it. It was found that uh, poor and less educated people are not very much interested because, I mean, the response received was, I don't have bank balance, how do I learn Paytm? I'm not interested. So, we rather ask them out that, uh, what are you interested in learning in? So, all of that is in the doc, I'll be showing it soon. So, I think this is the segment we are targeting, people who belong to a reasonably rich background and are more enthusiastic to use such a services, which is, uh, say, old people, uh, these people are very enthusiastic to know new stuff and people, who, uh, as I said, people who are not educated but have at least smartphone. So, please open the talk. Yeah, so while validating the customers, there is a voice recording. I guess uh, it's an eight and a half minute voice recording in which I am talking to four different people, three and four different people and discussing stuff. So, we can probably uh, take a look at it later. I will just show the doc. Yeah, so there is this uh, driver who is earning 5,000 per month. He is not interested in learning Paytm. He doesn't have a bank account or a debit card. He is more interested in Google Maps and call. And he said that his wife is facing an issue of people disturbing him call. And if something could be done about it, like he can call up a number and say that, okay, block this. Something like that. I mean, we still don't know what it will be. And other people, workers and all. So these guys don't have, know, know about Paytm, don't have a bank account, and neither are interested in learning Paytm or anything. So go down. So, there are other people. So, these people are reasonably uh, fortunate and they are interested in learning a lot of things. How do I transfer money via mobile, booking railway tickets, ordering from Amazon or uh, paying my bills, learning banking, a lot of things like we have uh, Green App, etc. coming up. So, people are interested. We spoke to Hostel Security Guard. He is saying that I still don't know how to play music on my mobile. Uh, so, it would be great if you can teach me how to play Sundar Khan part. Where OK Google was just one touch away from me. He had to say OK Google. That's all we did. We went to him and said, say OK Google and say Sundar Khan part. And it did the job for him and he was very happy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so for the revenue model, we have thought of two things. The, the one thing is that, so essentially, we, it, it, it appears to be like a Google search for mobiles. So th there are two revenue models. First, charge the customer itself if the service is significant. Second, build an AdWords type something. So if someone is interested in learning Paytm, we might as well recommend them Mobi Quick. Thank you. Oh, hi. So uh, my product is, uh, so my name is Arnab and I am the chief uh, everything officer of my company. And uh, so, uh, my, I work with uh, remotely sensed images and my product is unknown aerial vehicles for potential, uh, targeting potential fishing zones. Uh, now, uh, India is ranked second after China. Uh, China is also 10 times bigger than India. Uh, India is ranked second uh, in terms of its product production. Uh, but, uh, but the solid state as you see the marine production, uh, it's very counterintuitive that it is lower than the inland production. We have got more than 8,000 kilometers of coastline. And, uh, and uh, because of that, uh, the freshwater catch is much more than uh, the crustacean catch. And, uh, we are, and on, on, the, on the extreme uh, uh, left, we have, we have the, you know, the fish consumption map, which uh, shows that uh, how much uh, it's, it's the northern states doesn't come in as much as the southern state does. Um, okay, so uh, moving on, uh, the world, uh, the growing demand of uh, the fish is in the world. So uh, the demand of protein is growing, but the but the problem is that as the demand grows, uh, the the fish line I would call it the fishing line is receding from the coast. So it's getting more and more dangerous uh, to you know, for the fishermen to go out and uh, you know track the shoal of fishes in the open sea. Uh, <coughs> now the motivation to do this uh, job is if you see the world map. Uh, they show the fishing yield in terms of uh, kilometer square per year and India is actually in a very good position. Of course, uh, Japan is uh, at its best uh, 
uh, so is the case with the Scandinavian countries. Uh, but but India has got uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, fishing zones uh, around its border. Uh, uh, you, you see that uh, picture. So I was telling you, with the progression of year, the depth of the industrial fishing is going down. Uh, so it's it's getting difficult uh, for people to target these fishes. Uh, but but the, but again, the solid state is that India is is ranked the lowest in the omega three. Yeah, correct. Uh, so how do they how do they do it? So uh, let us let us uh, hear. Uh, uh, an audio. Uh, so I actually went out uh, to the guy who. So normally, ये fishing हम लोग trawler के जरिए करते हैं, जिसमें एक trawler पे 18 to 20 people uh, काम करते हैं. एक uh, trip का normal estimated uh, खर्चा expenses uh, 3 3.5 lakhs तक आ जाता है, जिसमें around uh, 5000 liter diesel. खाने का सामान, आइसिंग, सब कुछ इंक्लूडेड रहता है। सो जब ये लोग फिशिंग के लिए जाते हैं, उन लोग के साथ ट्रॉलर के साथ एक कैरियर बोट भी रहता है। वेल नॉर्मली वी यूज फिश फाइंडर वाइल all right. So what what all we have is just a fish finder, which companies like Garmin sells them. Uh, it's it's a sonar uh, with an area of uh, let's say one square kilometer. So my idea is to use UAVs, and I'm going to target the top layer fishes. So they are they are called pelagic uh, uh, species. And even if you don't find the shoal of fishes, you can find something like the the uh, like a, a stream of seaweeds. And uh, they can they can act as uh, indicators that where, where the fish exist. And my area, a uh, target area is Sasim Dock, uh, Kolabak, very near to this place. And this is what I I found there. And uh, this is this is uh, the opportunity which I'm creating. Uh, so if people say fishing is a gamble. So whenever someone uh, gets a good catch, they say he was lucky. So I want to end that and. Uh, so I am reducing the search time, I am reducing the time to market, I am creating security, creating peace of mind, guarantee, I am raising, I am moving beyond the traditional knowledge, making it a scientific activity and uh, there are monopolies, so I am eliminating those monopolies, I am eliminating, I am uh, uh, actually uh, there is risk, high risk involved uh, in bottom trawling uh, because of uh, in fishing, so I am eliminating that. And uh, and that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Siddharth Sonkar, CEO. Okay. This is CMO. <coughs> this is Aditya, CMO of our company, Online Piracy Reduction. So, what are we what are we giving to the? So, our service is mainly pro provide to the producer and distributor of the of the different companies. The to, to detect all the sites, the, detect the all uh, piracy sites where where the movie is being detect, uh, streamed by, uh, without any permissions. So we will detect that faster, and we will take down that site faster. So that the takedown will be possible with our with our participation with di different ISPs. We will have partnership with different ISPs so that we can take down. So generally, what happens is the people detect the sites that it is a pirate pirated site, but they can't take down the site immediately. So what happens is it takes about 35 to 40 hours for a site to, to be taken down. So what we are providing is faster takedown and faster detection. That is our service. So next thing. So direct competitions are mark scan. So even though there is competition in this space, we find that we a simple Google search and the first link will provide the pirated content directly. So even though they are working, they are not able to work very efficiently. So that is the point. So friend MTS is an offshore company which is coming to India, not not a very direct competition. And same is for mobile. This they also work in Hollywood, not in Bollywood. So India, so, so the government of India is also very active for piracy detection and piracy handling piracies. So our actually the total DRM, so digital right management market is about 1.06 billion dollars. But we are focusing focusing mainly on the movies right now. Those that will be our minimum viable product. And then we can expand expand to different uh, things like software and music. Is also a good source of piracy. So the selling point is smarter algorithm, faster algorithm, faster detection, faster takedown, and cheaper service. That can be done.
Next point, please. So the next thing. Yeah. So this. Yeah. This is our mi milestones. What we'll what we will be doing is for for 18th February, we'll be uh, so we'll be researching on different algorithms to find out the comparison between different videos of the same type. And for, for the 5th April, we what we will do is. So initially the problem is that there is a cam version of the video which can't be detected as easily as the so you have you have cam version of the video we have to find is this movie <coughs> correctly the same movie so cam version and hd version have to be compared so that is a difficult problem that we have to research and find so that that is the problem we are trying to solve to detect faster we have to find the comparison between cam version and the hd version so that will be our milestone next so work we have done till now we have talked to prof uh, so we have done some customer validation with john mathimathan he is a producer of sir farosh through through uh, professor jaswa so and we have also conducted an internal survey which in which the people so this is this is a short survey so we are not very proud of it but we will do an online survey which we can which will confirm more so initially the students in the hostel told that they uh, eight of the 12 of the students told that they wanted to go to the movie in the theaters but they, they found the online version pirated version and they saw the movie and the seven the seven people the, they just watched the movie because it is online they were not going to the theater so they were not the customers of the producers but still they watched the movie and the six people said that it will be on the it, it depends <coughs> on the you know on the movie the movie is better then they'll go to the theater or otherwise they'll watch pirated movie yeah so this is our BMC. So our target customer is mo mobile mo movie producer and distributor. So when we talk to the producer, they he said that he he suffers the maximum loss. But the pro they, but on online survey and internet, uh, we we found out that the producer also lo loses the too much uh, money. So that means our customer is producers as well as distributors. And what? So the channel channels through which is direct. Direct content, uh, co contact and website. So we'll have our website so that the producer and distributor can find us, find us out. And so the most important thing, value proposition is ensuring that the movie will be taken down effectively and directly uh, in the minimum time. So that is our value proposition. So good evening everyone, I am Vidhi, co-founder of Sepal and we are on a mission to provide two wheelers with most important comforts of a car. So if you see India is a country with a population of over 1.2 billion people. One in every six owns a two wheeler. In spite of having such a huge market presence, two wheelers are plagued with certain unavoidable problems and Avinash will continue with the problem. Uh, so our problems, uh, the biggest problems associated with two wheelers are like inability to drive freely during rain extreme discomfort in hot conditions, uh, especially during summers, uh, back pains during long drives. So uh, we have taken a survey, so this uh, uh, this satisfy our hypothesis. So our solution will be like a collapsible canopy that extends as a back support. So it will be of compact size, uh, no hindrance to driving experience and it will be easy to install. So there will be like uh, two handles, like uh, we have to just pull it off. Uh, so our product will deploy within seconds. Uh, there will be no need to get off the bike and it covers like uh, both passengers from sun and rain. So if we, uh, 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 if we get back support with the press of a button, uh, there can be an uh, optional windshield and side flaps to get 100% protection from rain and wind. So we have segmented the market based on age and income. So those belonging to less than 25 years of age, they are actually adult. They don't really look for protection or comfort. And those belonging to the upper class, those people they drive bike because of passion, not because of compulsion. So the sweet spot is between those below, those above 25 years of age and those belonging to lower and middle sections of the society. And we have also identified three major customers, uh, target customers. One is the delivery firms. All these have different requirements for example delivery, uh, delivery firms they want something very cheap something with minimum specifications and they would like an option to brand their logo on the canopy uh, 
uh, to show the place. And then the Delhi commuters, they would want a variety of options so that they can stand out from the rest. And then they want something good quality at a decent price and something uh, rugged enough for daily usage. Yeah. And then pricing will be as follows. We can provide it to delivery firms at a lower cost since we don't have to deal with the uh, retail distribution and other overhead charges. And a regular co consumer will have option to buy from two variants, one with back support and one without. Uh, we have, uh, so our primary, uh, these will be our revenue streams and primary one will be sales. And another thing is we just don't want to create a single product, we want to create an ecosystem around the product. So we will have a number of third party vendors who can uh, uh, come up with different canopy designs, colors, combinations and not just that, our structure can also support different kind of add-ons like cell phone holder speakers etc. All these things will be developed by third party vendors and they will be allowed to sell it on our platform and we will charge them some commission. And in addition to that, we can also monetize the ad space on the canopy. We can allow different companies to put up their brands and in return we will charge up, uh, some amount from them. A significant part of that can be used to subsidize the product cost, thus making it affordable to everybody. Uh, there are total of 500 billion two-wheelers across the globe. And uh, in India, there are just 180, um, uh, in China, India and Indonesia, they dominate the market and in India, there are 183 million two-wheelers, out of which 120 are motorcycles. Our initial target will be just the motorcycle since our prototype can only be fitted on a motorbike. And these are the other uh, uh, competitors who solve the same problems as we do. And each of them have their own advantages and limitations. We try to retain all the positives in our design while uh, eliminating the negatives as much as possible. And this bike umbrella, it is actually quite a success story. Yeah, the retailer is selling it at a like, thousand units per month and is also getting demand from near neighboring states. And that is China. Yes. So it's actually being imported from China in bulk and then they distribute it again. And then even companies like BMW and Honda, they are uh, researching and investing to come up with solution to solve these problems. So we agree that the market is huge and we are, uh, we will be facing some sort of competition in future sooner or later. And uh, we have our own ways to ward them off. One is our patents. Everything that we have built, everything that we have built is being done for the first time and everything is patentable. This makes it very difficult for any competitor to get around the patents and come with a quality product. And other is we want to exploit our first movers advantage, Tense get up. partnerships. <coughs>
and uh, these uh, and these other problems are such as cutting the vegetables and uh, that. So from that all the pro uh, problems that we found, we uh, decided to focus particularly on this particular uh, thing. So uh, our product will be uh, a, a small dish uh, washer, which will be like putting two uh, two uh, two boxes uh, of of a size of a uh, uh, two boxes of a size of a uh, oven, a microwave oven, uh, side by side. So of that size, uh, it will have a compartment at the center. So from uh, at one uh, on one side, you will be putting your dirty. Uh, uh, whatever utensil is there and that, that uh, utensil will come out from the other side uh, with uh, entire cleaning done. So it will have the scrubbing mechanisms as well and uh, as well as the uh, rinsing mechanism. Uh, so for the uh, uh, customer uh, side, uh, we will be uh, doing the customer relations through uh, phone contact, email and personal contacts. Uh, the channels will be through dealers and e-commerce. So what you have done? Yes, uh, we, so for now, uh, uh, so last time, uh, from last time onwards, we have only done the uh, customer uh, discovery part, customer relation, uh, customer survey part, and from that we came for this product. How so, many did you check with? Uh, six, six, sir. What is the response? Uh, we found that every uh, every difficult task that they have, the women face, they usually outsource it to maids. So, but when, whenever these maids go out uh, uh, out for a holiday without notifying, then there is a lot of load. So. Uh, and uh, then other problems were like cutting of vegetables is a big issue but for that already uh, products are available so we, we don't want to uh, go into that uh, area yes sir that is the last thing okay so we are team smart log and we've devised smart security systems so the so the major problem which we see right now is uh, Basically, we are building locks based on iris scan. The major problems which we see right now in the biometric scan technology which is used is that uh, they, they sometimes uh, even the wrong fingerprints get recognized and uh, this leads to lots of problems and they are highly vulnerable. You can trace someone else's fingerprint and, and then open the lock using their fingerprints. So that's what we believe the burning need is a more secure system for locking uh, for for locking and the reason is uh, we see that daily there is there is an increase in the number of valuables which people use and uh, the things which people require so they need a better security system for such things and our uh, our product is basically a lock uh, a, a similar locking system to the mechanical locks but it, it uses the iris scan technology so the basic uh, uh, competition is uh, uh, the current uh, uh, current product uh, uses fingerprint scan technology. We use iris scan technology. Basically, it is uh, very convenient and also highly secure because no one can copy your iris scan spectrum from your eye. And we are also going to uh, implement that whether uh, the uh, spectrum uh, from which we have taken the spectrum, the scan the model is alive or not basically uh, in uh, what happens in uh, fingerprint scanning is that they a copy you, uh, we, we can copy the fingerprints but uh, the uh, from which will be copy it it won't be uh, alive so basically we are detecting whether the person is alive or not that uh, eye is alive or not and then we are granting uh, access so a go to market strategy, strategy will be uh, demonstrating all the uh, all the uh, customers, uh, that is uh, all the businesses, be because our model is B B2B, uh, about how the product works and how all this stuff. Okay, so how does it look like? Basically, it is similar to a box. Uh, it, it is similar to a box and with some width and uh, behind there are three or four uh, uh, types of metal rods which get pierced into the wall. So that's how it looks like and uh, at the front of the box there is a rotatable uh, maybe there's a rotatable trackball so which has the iris scanner so it, uh, it is not a problem for people with uh, means it can be used by people with any height like so it, it won't be a problem the height won't be a problem and it is just like a normal lock the normal lock you require a key you need to carry it all the time with you and uh, then you need to unlock maybe two or three stages so what we do is replace the key with your iris scan using the trackball okay the market research we have done uh, market uh, we have uh, we went to uh, different banks this is uh, audio clip from uh, canara bank and the uh, branch here in uh, gulmohar 
it is uh, about 10 minutes so i won't i won't be playing it <coughs> right now uh, what they uh, t told us what they told us is that uh, the infrastructure is not uh, the infrastructure is not compatible with uh, our locking system so that is one problem and the cost is the second problem and they are ready to buy it at uh, 7000 to 10000 range uh, and they are very happy that uh, this technology is convenient for them and also very secure because uh, we will be using uh, we are going to provide this for their bank vaults where they will be st storing the money and also the jewelry shops and all that uh, all the different uh, businesses are our uh, potential customers so the value proposition is we provide peace of mind and convenience uh, by uh, <coughs> removing all the inconveniences like a fingerprint remembering password or any uh, uh, combination and our customer segment is b2b uh, customers segment uh, such the initial ma uh, ma uh, initial customer segment is banks then we will move on to jewelry and uh, households uh, basically building pro uh, pro building projects are also uh, going to buy our product uh, we have done that survey and our customer channel is that uh, demonstrating workshops and advertising so that is our product thank you This so our product is Netra. Uh, it's basically a smart eyewear uh, which provides you an alternate channel to reading text. So our uh, customer, our special focus is on visually impaired or those with weak vision. And our product basically enables uh, you to uh, take any physical text on any physical surface and tra translate that into audio and that audio uh, you can hear. So it's basically an alternate means to reading. Uh, so Lokit here is the CEO, Ravel is the CTO and I myself Palak is the CMO. Uh, so a solution, uh, we basically intend to use cutting edge technologies in computer vision, uh, natural language processing and speech recognition uh, to build a tool, uh, build a device that enables you to take any images input. Uh, our device would, uh, for anyone with weak vision, our device would guide you to orient the uh, image in right direction and once it uh, once it is oriented right uh, our device converts that into audio and uh, that is the basic uh, that is essentially what our device does uh, so the existing products in the market are uh, number one google glass however the problem with that is it's not exactly doing uh, reading from a surface physical surface what it does is read uh, any digital format like so any text in digital format and that converts it into audio but what we are doing is we can read it from any book uh, like let's say a book or a magazine or a newspaper we can uh, read from any physical surface and convert it into an audio so basically that's more helpful what is the cost of this? Uh, for google glass uh, that's 300 dollars approximately 700 dollars yeah and uh, another company in uk give vision which was working in sim on similar lines uh, basically they were also working for visually impaired uh, and uh, they were also doing a similar thing to convert it into audio format. However, uh, they pivoted and right now they are working uh, in the field of virtual reality. So they are also not currently in the market. So uh, the product concept as she already described is a comfortable eyewear fitted with a camera which captures the image and it translates, uh, it transfers it to the phone uh, as you can see in this diagram. So the text is being uh, sent into the phone which is then uh, sent over the server and it relays back the audio which is then um, fed back into the user's ears. So the major components that our de uh, device will consist of is a Wi-Fi module which is approximately 300 rupees and a, a high quality camera which can read from any physical surface that can uh, cost around uh, 2500 to 3000. And uh, uh, for subscription cost, Google is charging around one point five dollars for thousand uh, per thousand API calls per month. Thank you. Hello everyone, we are team people in here to find them. And uh, this is Shubham Jadhav, CEO of our team. And this is Shubham Jadhav, CTO of our team. I am Shadhapu Jain, CMO of the team. Um, our idea is um, uh, people need to find them. So the current situation of prisons in India is very bad. They are overcrowded. For every 100 
patient sales there are around 119 prisoners and also the cost required is quite high for maintenance of them and uh, one solution for this is like parole like um, however the infrastructure of parole in India is very bad and uh, prisoners get parole only in very rare situations when they are critical illness or very important family functions we think so our product can improve this uh, so imagine a, a minor who has done just some beat someone up or some minor uh, prisoner or someone like that, uh, he can be sent to parole uh, on good behavior and if his good behavior continues, uh, his parole can be extended otherwise he can be sent back to the jail. That will solve the overcrowding problem. So uh, what our product is, is a GPS tracking anklet. It is used widely in the west but has no penetration yet in India. Uh, what it will do is. Uh, uh, say where the person is in the specified radius uh, and alert when it is tampered or uh, if the person goes out of that. So uh, the current work done by our team is as follows. We started out with the GPS tracking for kids and uh, then realized there are uh, many other applications of that and we did some uh, contacted fab companies in China got uh, with the quotations and uh, estimated price of the module and other things. Uh, then we researched on current market competitions and other things and what we found was that the GPS tracking uh, market is quite saturated as well as there are some very cheap products from China and we cannot undercut them in price. So what we did was we pivoted and uh, now we are providing B2B services to the Indian government. Uh, uh, we contacted the ACP of uh, Mumbai police and uh, he was quite excited by our Product and we have a meeting with him next week. Uh, also, we will be uh, trying to contact the commissioner of Mumbai police about the work. So moving on to the business model canvas, so value proposition we have is like we are modernizing the Indian police and we want to provide them a user friendly and secure way to track the prisoners. And uh, the channels is we want to, it's a B2B solution, we will directly give them the product. Custom relationship, like we want, uh, they will be using our app on which they can track the prisoners. So we want to give them a really good user experience on the app. So they we have a long extended customer relations. Customer segment, as we mentioned, it's a police department as of now. We will be that's our niche market. And our revenue streams, we uh, have two options in mind. First one is we charge them a single time. Uh, or a charge. So that will be the product as well as the services we are going to provide them. Or another option is we charge them just for the product we are going to give them and then other than that a subscription charges, monthly subscription charges, something like that. Uh, our key resources currently are mostly intellectual and uh, we plan to gather the physical sources through further partnerships. Our activities is quite clear that we want to produce quality yeah, products which are quite reliable. Yeah. That's okay. What is the next? Next slide. So yeah, uh, RMV, uh, since the product is of sensitive nature, it, it needs to be durable and reliable so that it does not fail on major moments and uh, it needs to have real time positioning and alerts. Also when it, as soon as it gets tempered or broken, 